Now, preparations are underway in Rome ahead of an EU leader summit that marks 60 years since the founding of the forerunner of the European Union as we know it today. EU leaders, 27 of them, will meet in the frescoed hall on the Capitoline Hill where the historical Treaty of Rome was signed at that time by only six countries. The core idea of the agreement is that people, goods and services in Europe can circulate freely right across their borders. This weekend celebration, however, comes against a background of rising populism and Great Britain's, of course, shocking Brexit vote, which happened in June last year. So can 27 EU members bridge their differences, form a new alliance and strengthen the EU? Is the anniversary the brand new start of a brand new EU corporation or is this just the beginning of the end? Saturday's meeting may have some answers to all those questions. Kevin Osbeck joins us now live from Brussels with a little more insight on what we should expect. Um, Kevin, between Brexit, which is now a couple of days away, really, the Greek crisis, the rise of populist pop, uh, politicians like Geert Wilders in Netherlands and in some European states, uh, in other European states, rather, has the EU really achieved its members and its founders' aspirations 60 years on? Well, there is no question about it that right now the EU faces a number of unprecedented challenges. Of course, uh, first and foremost is Brexit. A country has never l left the block before, uh, so there's definitely going to be uh, a lot of uh, heartbreak over this. In fact, European pr uh, uh, Commission President John Colin Juncker says uh, there's just uh, sadness about all of this. You also mentioned uh, the refugee crisis. The EU still has not been able to get all 28 countries uh, together when it comes to a solution to that. But uh, political experts, political scientists who we've spoken to say, when you look at the big picture here, when you take a step back and you uh, take a look at the past 60 years, there's no question about it that the EU has done many more positive things uh, than negative things. They say the EU has led to unprecedented economic growth and economic wealth here on the European continent. Uh, and also, uh, first and foremost, the EU has done an excellent, a superb job at maintaining peace here on the continent. For 60 years, there really has not been war here on the continent and political scientists say we can thank the EU for that. Indeed, and that's a point that we often tend to forget when we talk about the EU and its predecessor as well. Um, but let's focus on the Treaty of Rome, signed in 1957. There are only six signatory states at that time. So today with 27 members, did the EU expand a bit too fast? What were the key mistakes uh, that were made in the last 60 years and what lessons have been learned from them? Yeah, well, some Brussels watchers will say it did expand too fast in the past decade or so, especially the expansion uh, out east into incorporating Eastern Europe happened way too fast. And you now have a block where uh, in some ways it can be east versus west, north versus south, uh, rich versus poor. So some say by integrating uh, or trying to integrate uh, so many of these Eastern European countries into the bloc, uh, there were some failures there. There's just just too many cultural differences, uh, too many uh, nationalistic ties out east uh, when you compare to the political situation out west. So uh, that is why that really expansion is no longer a priority for the EU. European Council President Donald Tusk about two years ago uh, at the beginning of a new year said that the era of expansionism is over. We need to focus on the 28. Now, of course, soon to be 27, but we have to focus on making a strong union with the countries that are already currently in the block. Indeed. There's also been related to that. There's a lot of talk uh, these days about a multi-speed Europe with even the German finance minister backing what he called multi-speed governance. But in terms of EU policy on the ground to the citizens within the bloc, what does that really mean? So this was an idea that was thrown out uh, by President Juncker, President of the European Commission, and he wants to have, or at least uh, discuss and debate this idea of a two-speed Europe. And this is what this means, that uh, countries that want to further integrate and become an ever closer union uh, should be able to do so. And other countries that don't want that, that want to make sure that certain and specific powers uh, remain uh, at the hands of the national governments, they should be able to do that as well. So you do have then essentially a two-speed Europe. Well, many Eastern European countries, especially including Poland, Poland has been very vocal about this, don't like this idea at all. And the reason why is they say France, Germany, 
Belgium, the Netherlands, they can all be at that one speed, that faster speed clo uh, towards closer integration and treat other countries that don't want that, like Poland themselves, as second class members of the bloc. So uh, this is certainly an idea that was thrown out by the European Commission. He put it out there, uh, President Juncker, uh, but not everyone's on board with this two speed idea. Indeed. One last question for you, Kevin. Um there's been a lot of interesting documents coming through from the EU over the years. What should we expect from the Rome Declaration tomorrow? So the draft of the Rome Declaration is already out there. And even though this is the document that is really supposed to set the guidelines for the next 10 years uh, for the EU, the next 10 years, of course, being now without the UK, uh, it's pretty similar to what the EU philosophy currently is, uh, providing security for European citizens, as well as being an engine for economic growth. That's what's been laid out in the declaration that now all 27 uh, EU members are expected to sign off on. Uh, there was some uh, hesitancy from Greece. They wanted some uh, reinsurances in there in terms of uh, labor reform. Uh, Poland, uh, we all talked about some concerns about that two-speed Europe. Uh, they also, at first, were a little hesitant to sign this. They wanted to make sure that NATO was mentioned in there as well, uh, that the EU would be a strong supporter of NATO. But now the leaders of all 27 countries say they're on board with this uh, document. They want to sign it. And once again, it essentially calls for cooperating, further cooperation, and making sure uh, that the priority number one is making sure that European citizens have a very uh, strong, productive, and secure lives. Indeed, and that, of course, is the sixth chapter of the EU story. Kevin Osbeck, live in Brussels. Thank you.